Hello, this is Sean Copeland, Chairman and CEO of Regent Bank, and we are getting close to wrapping up a series called Seven Steps to Financial Freedom. It's a personal financial series on how can we get to a point to where we don't have to worry about money and we can just live our life. So we're going to cover uh, step six today, but let me very quickly hit on steps one through five, and I'm just gonna give you the titles of each of them, and you can go back on our website and review these if you would like. Number one is maximize your income. Make sure you are earning as much as you possibly can. Number two, create a budget and ultimately create a rainy day savings account of three to six months of savings for unexpected expenses. And you cannot skip the creating the budget. That is absolutely critical to being financially independent. Number three, pay off credit cards and get to in the habit of saving first and buying later instead of buying first with plastic and then paying it off in the future because that's just so expensive for you to do. Number four, or contribute to your retirement plan and for sure make sure that you are maximizing the match that your employer is providing because that is literally a hundred percent return on your money. Also take advantage of any other benefits that your employer might have uh, to offer uh, to you and there are several which we talked about in that video. And then finally uh, session five was uh, once you've done all those things, then begin to use your money wisely by either paying down debt or saving money based upon the rate. So you're going to pay down uh, loans and credit cards with the highest rate and then go in kind of a descending order. And then at some point you're going to get to a point to where the money that you are making on your investments and savings is greater than maybe the money you're paying on your mortgage, for example. So my advice would be put the money in investments instead of paying down more on your mortgage. Um, again, that's a personal benefit, but just if you want to make more money, the key is to get your money working for you. And if you pay down an 18% credit card, that's an 18% return to you. If you put it in an 8% uh, investment account that's kind of been on average yielding you say six to 8%, that's better than putting it on a 3% mortgage. So today what we're gonna talk about is step number six, which is insurance. Now this is something that a lot of people are not uh, familiar with, not conversant in, but you need to always Always have enough life and disability insurance to take care of your family. Now, how much is enough? It's all going to depend upon your particular situation, but in my opinion, you should always have a term life policy that pays off your debts at any given time. The last thing you want to do is pass away unexpectedly and leave a big burden for your family to take care of and have them have to deal with creditors and stuff like that. So you also, if you are the breadwinner in your family, if you're the one that brings home the income to your family, you need to make sure you have enough insurance so that the proceeds of that insurance can help your family live. Ideally, the proceeds of that insurance would be sufficient such that you could actually invest those proceeds, your family could, and have enough to live. So let me give an example. If they are accustomed to living on $50,000 a year and of take home, and, and that's what they're gonna need, then you need to probably have about a million dollars of insurance. Why do I say that? Because they can then get the million dollars, invest it, get a 5% after tax return, and that would be the $50,000 that they've been accustomed to. That is good, good financial management where you're taking care of your family even after you are gone. If you don't have any debt and you have uh, assets that can be sold to pay all this or marketable securities, then you're good. It's not that big of a deal, but just make sure that you don't leave your family uh, in a lurch. The last thing uh, to think about is disability coverage. People, a lot of times, they don't think about what would happen if they were hurt but not killed. And all of a sudden, you can't work, and you're sitting at home, and the bills are piling up, and that happens a whole lot. We all see um, insurance uh, 
uh, disability insurance advertisements on TV, but we think that it will never apply to us, but it could. Uh, you know, it's not only for surgeons and doctors, it can be for anybody. So make sure that you have coverage just in case you would get disabled as well. So that's step number six. Next time we're going to cover the last and final step in our seven steps to financial freedom. Thanks so much for joining us.